I'm Aubrey, and welcome back to Sailing Miss Lone Star. This is my pirate ship, and her name is Houdini. She's a 1977 Formosa 51. This week on Sailing Miss Lone Star, we add the name to the transom of the boat, and we finally get off the dock. We drop the hook and we find a major leak. Then Searle spends quite a bit of time doing some repairs and maintenance. We are preparing to go and Searle is deodorizing the belt so it doesn't squeak. I watch enough TikTok and short videos where they put deodorant on the belt that's squeaking and it just worked. Okay. I don't know how long it's gonna work, but it worked. You know what, there is a use for TikTok, so there you have it. That looks good. So, would you please ease the main halyard? Mm -hmm. Oh, actually no, this is this red one. Pretty good. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'll just... Do you give me... Oh, a little more. We secure the jerry cans to the 2x4 you bolted to the stanchions, and we get ready to go with just a few more little bits and bobs to handle before we get off the dock. Okay, I don't want to tighten that too much. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Good job. Super custom. But that's this, just this part. Look how proud he is of that. I like that. Anytime I can use the router is a good day. <laughs> okay, here we go. And then the little empty one at the end. Aubrey, yeah. what are you doing? I'm getting pretty back here. I even put like a little period like W dot palm. It's great. So how far are we from being legal? <laughs> like four more letters. And what material are you using? <laughs> oh, <laughs> blue tape. <laughs> Only the best, eh? Only the best. You know, we spent all that money really gussing her up. We're just cutting the last corner. I actually really like seeing the name on the back, even though it's in blue tape. I won't be able to see it till I jump in the dinghy. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you want to see it. Can I pass the camera to you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Behold. <laughs> well, you win some, you lose some. I'm gonna call this one a win. We're off! You're shaking a little too. I'm shaking. It's special day. I Seeing love... that place in the background is good. I pulled off a dog. Got a little cheer. I'm uh, really proud right now. I have to say this was the perfect conditions to do so. Uh, we waited for a slack high and now we're gonna follow this boat out because I guess this is kind of a tricky little area to run aground. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna follow the charts and super excited. We're leaving Lopez, finally. So exciting, so beautiful. I'm sad to go, but I'm so excited to see what's next. I am filled with an enormous amount of pride as we leave Lopez Island. We're just going for a short sail to Hunter Bay, where we'll drop the hook and just have a little bit of change of scenery. It's been almost a year since we splashed the boat, and this is a huge moment for Searle and I. We are so happy to just have her out there on the water, cruising around. We're still waiting for the sails, so right now we're under power. We're heading north. That way! We're still waiting for the sails to be rebuilt by Precision Sails, who has been amazing in this whole process. And once we get those up, we'll be able to get some wind in them. And we're very excited for that. Oh, it's cold. It's supposed to be summer. <gasps> okay. Tomorrow it will be 10 degrees warmer, <laughs> but 25 knots of wind. Oh boy. So Poodle's a little scared. I just took him down below. We're about to drop the hook, and I just went to go get my Fowley. Woohoo! Cold hands. <laughs> really cold hands. Here comes our ding dong. Ah. 
<laughs> I'm wearing gloves like a smarty pants. Actually, I don't function well in the cold at all. <laughs> My body shuts down. Yeah, you can give yourself a little bit of momentum. All right. Mm -hmm. You see the schooner here? Anchor's going down. Are we in? I'm just waiting for the wind to move us. <laughs> We're so protected here. It's going to be great for tomorrow's vlog. Oh, that's great. There's uh, Patrick on his schooner with the rear dinghy. Oh, and okay. And there's his other boat over there as oh, well. Oh, cool. Nice little spot. Yeah, so we've got about 50 feet out is at that black marker. Okay, we've got 19 uh, depth here. Okay, it's cold. Um, it's 19 feet deep here and we are just dropping the hook. I'm super excited to be back out on anchor. I love uh, all of the nice folks at Lopez, but I really don't like being on the dock. I love just being out here, it's my favorite. I can be a recluse. Man, poodle, oh, come on. Oh my gosh. Come on, buddy, get back. Sit, stay. Okay, Searle's putting on the snubber right now. Cool, neat little gadget. Cool, all right, well. <laughs> you got the chain a little bit? Yeah. <clears throat> I want to fasten the snub out. Oh, <laughs> bye! <laughs> okay. Very pointless snub out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't see that. We used our old winch there and put it up front for this. <clears throat> it's worked pretty well. So, for those of you who don't know, the snubber is to take the pressure off of the windlass so that the brake on the windlass isn't taking all of that force from holding the anchor. And so you add, you release a little bit more um, of the chain and then it's gonna leave you a nice little swoop. So then all of that pressure is put on your cleat or in our case, the old winch. You wanna push that so I can show them? Yeah, take all the pressure off the bowsprit. Though. Yeah, we're taking the pressure off the bowsprit too. So you can see how that's hooked up there. And then this is gonna pick up all of the tension and then the chain is gonna make like a little loop. So we are expecting a little bit of a blow tomorrow and we have got 150 feet of chain out and we're on a 135 pound M2, which is a Mantis product. Our bridle is Mantis too, uh, which is pretty nice. So we're pretty happy with our setup. We'll see how we hold up tomorrow in the blow. As we drop the hook, there is a beautiful rainbow over the transom of the boat. It couldn't be a more perfect first sail in a while. Can you guys see the rainbow? Okay, I've turned down the exposure a little bit so you guys can see this beautiful rainbow. Okay, it's gonna go up, 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 and then here's the other side of it. We've made it, and now we're going to cook some dinner. It's gonna be Searle. We're gonna Me? cook Searle. No! Well, if we're shipwrecked, we certainly can't eat poodle. It's gonna yeah, be you. True. So one of the things we have to still sort out is that stuffing box. You can hear the build running. Oh no. So I have to get down there and go lock it up with my big plumber's wrench. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Are we gonna be able to go down the coast with it like that, you think? I don't like the long pause. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's what bilge pumps are there for. The big ships leak a lot of water in all the time. There you have it, confidence. You can see the pretty steady drip, but yeah, let me get you in that, there. Shine that light in there a little more. This is also a backup anti-piracy tool. So when it's running, you're supposed to have a drip a minute or something like that. This is uh, without the shaft turning, and that's maybe 
one could say a stream. Oh no. <laughs> you could see here, it's been a whole bunch of water coming down and that is from the anti-siphon for the exhaust. Do you hear that? We can sleep without the bilge pump kicking on. <laughs> Ooh, that's a heavy one. It's actually heavier than my dumbbell. Well, maybe you should use that instead. So we've got this all tightened up now and feeling good. Now we're gonna make dinner. Okay. Here's our fish, our beautiful table that's set, and the salads. Woo -hoo. Thank you. Before we get into the second half of this video, did you know that I have over 1,000 daily shows on Vimeo? I am so excited and actually so shocked that we got to 1,000. Here's a few clips from the daily show over the past few years. Everyone's gone, so I'm having some good time. Do you have to spray to my eyeballs or can you like... Feel like you're the captain by sitting on that seat. I wake up feeling like you're the captain. <laughs> we had a surprise thunderstorm. <laughs> so much cheaper than a parrot. Ow! Again. Started. <laughs> well, can I join the band? fun getting to know you guys and sharing this time with you behind the scenes. I love my Daily Show family so much. Back to your normal programming. Second to last job to get the fuel tank, the third fuel tank plumbed and usable. Uh, we have just received this piece of kit. It is an access plate cover and makes it into a nice easy inspection hatch and the lower fuel tank didn't have studs that come in from the bottom so you're actually just screwing into the other metal of the tank and there's not a lot of threads that actually can catch and pull itself tight so this is gives you a very good clamping seal way more effective This kit is pretty cool, so it consists of one of these folding retainers that's on the inside of the tank, then on the outside you've got this slightly smaller and tighter gasket that goes on top and that actually is going to retain this in place so you don't have to use any sort of sealants uh, because we are installing it from the bottom up and then you've got of course your outer plate which is really substantial. So this is the old hatch that used to use a bit of gasket material, but you can see the retaining ring that has been welded on the inside. You've only got about three threads, so to strip that would be quite easy. And to go along with that, there's only four studs per side. You're gonna be going to this sort of configuration with five studs either side and that's going to have this be underneath. First step, align retaining ring and then mark the perimeter. Once the perimeter has been marked then we can take the cover plate and align with the outside and then I can twist until I get almost all the holes to not align with any of the previous holes. Uh, now I'm just gonna go grab the drill set for half inch and take out all these little holes. Okay, so I drilled out the first one and I worked out how I'm gonna do it. 
So, first of all, got a center punch. A splash of cutting fluid. And this is a 3.30 second bit. And this is just going to start my whole Okay, once I've got that hole done, then I go up to a, this, I think an eighth inch. Put a little bit more cutting fluid on the bit. And then I've got a Christmas tree bit, step drill bit, and this one goes up to half inch. Take the three eighths bit. Now to do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more times. As this project draws to a close, you can see here I sanded the surface here so there's a nice mating surface. And then on the bottom here, I've also taken a hand file and cleaned up all the burrs. So we've got the new fuel return, new fuel pickup, and a fuel sensor. We go inside, that's the fuel return that drops into that corner. Here you got your fuel level sender, which is a reed style, and there is the fuel pickup. Now it's time to close it up. Okay, now to install the ring. So you can see it's got a break in the middle. Turn it over, fold it back out. with one hand and I'll take the gasket squeeze that on and now work your way around so the gasket retains it in there without me having to hold it now we can take the cover plate Now I'm just going to go around finger tight, opposite sides. I'm a lot happier with this type of seal versus the just the thread going into the tank, this clamping force because this area is kind of bowed and it will give us the best seal. I'm just going to whip a driver on there, snug these guys down. as it's gonna get so you can see the gasket kind of is doing a little bit of a squeeze out but not too much as it's not under stressed so the center beam fits in there and I think I've got like two mils of space underneath there I had to wallow two little holes into this beam with the step drill just to allow the for these to fit in here. So one of the last projects to do with the third fuel tank is wire up the fuel level sender. So what we have here is the fuel gauge and then we have this switch here where you can select. So you first have to have the ignition on and then it's a momentary so you have to hold to port or hold to starboard. But I don't really like that, so I'm gonna get rid of the momentary and rather have where it just goes on to one side, on to the other side, off in the center, and then add a second switch just below that one where it will have for the forward tank and down the line have a day tank. These are the switches we're gonna use. You see you've got your common in the center and then your two loads either side. So there you have it. Drill the second hole in here. Uh, use the vacuum cleaner Spot clean spot clean spot clean. I will just use a chamfer tool just to clean off the edge here And then I'll insert both of the switches So there you have it I will label this all nicely to label this we're going to use one of these uh, perforation labelers Something like that. So 
So just like that. I think what I'm gonna do is, it would make more sense for the pri primary tanks to be at the top, and then your forward tank and the day tank at the bottom here. So, I just did all the labels in here at the same time, so house and starting. So you can see how we have it, and eventually day will be there, and then you could switch and have the day tank on. Nice. Now all I have to do is run the wiring. The wiring right now ends off right underneath this panel. So I just need to feed it under, underneath the dog bowl, and up through the back. Wiring complete. Now we can turn it on. Those are correct way around, and then that will be correct. So now what I'll do is remove the upholstery from downstairs over the fuel tank and fill all that tank for the first time since all this work has been done. So this one is for the primary starboard tank and then this one runs to the forward tank. This will be the first time being filled. Woohoo! First tank down, second tank going in right now. What I am doing inside is going with a flashlight, looking around the fuel tank as best as possible with the space given, and checking in the bilge to see if anything is running down there. You can hear it filling up. And then also I'm checking on the fuel gauge to see that it is, um, showing fuel going in. Uh, right now it doesn't show anything. The depth of the tank is 14 inches. The depth of the reed sensor that I've installed is 13 inches. So the first tank didn't even touch the sensor yet. So we'll see what happens after the second tank. We have four tanks in total. Uh, those scepter tanks, you can fill them up quite comfortably to six gallons each. So far so good, no diesel in the bilge. Uh, I've thrown about 25 gallons in there and uh, that's the jugs empty, gonna have to go fetch some more. And on the fuel gauge, you can see it registers just shy of a quarter tank which is great because the tank actually is tapered so the bottom of the tanks the smallest part i'm hoping that could possibly be an 80 gallon tank 80 to 100 gallons man that will be fantastic so the last thing i did was use the keenan filters to prime the fuel lines and now it's just cycling the fuel in that third tank and everything is running perfectly. So one of the last jobs with the fuel system, as of now, is to finish plumbing up the third fuel tank. Um, originally, I'm not too sure that tank had a little bit of identity crisis. It was filled with water and fuel and had some weird plumbing. But that's all been sorted out now, and it is now a fuel tank, and I'm very sure of that. So all the plumbing has been brought over to the Keenan filter system and now I need to plumb it all together. And I'm gonna take you down into the bilge where all the fun jobs happen. Bilge time! The shiny gold bling. The gold standard of fuel filters. So here we have the two manifolds. This is supply and this is return. And you can see that the center have both been blocked off. We have the manifold that controls our fuel supply and return. We have our supply on the right hand side and we have our return on the left hand side. And you can see both center valves are missing their handles and have their safety caps in still. And we're gonna make that change today. Here we have the fuel supply and return manifolds. 
and you can see both the center of the supply and return are missing their handles and clearly still have their safety caps in place. Today we're going to change that. Uh, these are all JIC fittings so we're going to stick with that because it is what Andy suggests and is what is supplied. So when Andy Keenan arrived he actually brought a whole bunch of parts and fittings with us. So I have removed those two safety bungs and what we'll be using are JIC fittings. So this is going to be your three quarter to nine sixteenths and you can see it's got this flare on the end and that is your JIC mechanical fittings. So that's your male side and that's your female side and you can see they have respective flares to it and that will be your mechanical fitting where you don't have to use any sealant between those two fittings however this MPT three-quarter fitting will require some sealant going up into the ball valve which is going to be this Loctite 565 which is your hydraulic pipe thread and it's what he used so I'm going to use it. Uh, when putting this together make sure you make it super fuss. The only issue with these is if you're taking it off and on, off and on, you compress this fitting and it slowly makes the orifice smaller and smaller and will likely leak eventually. I don't know how tight to go with this. I'm not familiar with using these JSC fittings. Um, I am gonna call that good and if I have any issues I can easily cinch that more if needed but that should be a perfect mechanical fitting and I'll be using this on these threads up into the ball valve nearing the end this is still the original tube that Andy brought when he came over for the original installation. I'm being quite liberal because I do not like diesel leaks and especially not into the bulge. Now that I'm upside down, of course I'm gonna do it the wrong direction. Finger tight. And I'll just take the spanner, adjustable, and do my best. When I have both hands free, now you can see we've got the two barbs securely fastened. Now I have this labeled hose for return that needs to be affixed to here. And then I have a supply to go to there. However, I do not have the crimping tool that Andy had. So I'm just gonna be using hose clamps on both of these barbs. So we have the new valve and the double hose clamp installed for both the return and the supply. And I've set the valve handles up in such a way that they cannot interfere with the other handles. So it's the end of this day. Uh, tomorrow I'll throw some fuel into that tank run it a little bit, uh, leave the covers off so I can inspect if there's any leaks. If so, that's another problem. But I have my fingers crossed that everything's gonna work out just fine. So, I hope you're holding your fingers crossed too. Thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to my Patreons for supporting me and all of you that follow me on The Daily Show. Like I